This is Royce with In-Depth Utility Solutions and today we're going to talk to you about the VVAX Metrotech camera system and how to troubleshoot it. This video will cover uh, troubleshooting of the VCAM Digital, the VCAM Modular, the VCAM 5 and the VCAM 6. So first of all we want to inspect our just a physical condition of the control module and the reel. And I'm looking for anything that doesn't quite look normal. So one of the problems that we see on the reel is that the cable could be what we call kinked. And that's when the operator may be uh, pushing it too hard and, and break the fiberglass uh, stiffener inside the cable and then the cable won't look smooth like it does right now on the reel. It'll have a, a little deformed where the cable is bent over and it won't fall back into this kind of nice little shape right here. Another thing we want to look at is the control module. Make sure it hadn't been dropped. Make sure that the unit uh, it turns on and it appears to be operating fine. The main thing that I see with the with the reels is that it's not the control module. It is going to be a problem with the interconnect cable. So there are three things that I look at when I typically have a problem. I look at the interconnect cable. I look at the what we call the curly cord. And then I look at the camera. I'd like to show you how to replace your interconnect cable on a VVAX Metrotech digital camera system, a modular camera system, VCAM 5, and a VCAM 6 camera system. Now, all the parts are the same. They may be uh, as far as replacement parts, and uh, it may be slightly different as you uh, on the reel. Uh, some reel, this reel is in the back, on the other reels it's on the side. However, if you'll notice here, that th this is connected into this uh, black box right here. So the way we're going to take this off is that we're first we're going to probably best to remove the cable from the reel so that we have plenty of room to work in there. So I'm just going to unspin it off here. And then you can take your thumb and you and finger and you can usually do a quarter of a turn and it'll it'll be loosened up and then you can work it off. I like to use a pair of pliers and I just grab it right here. And what you want to do is grab it closest to the to your axle. If you'll notice that it appears that you can take it apart right here also, which this does come apart. But it's uh, this is where we uh, put all the wires together, and, and 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 these wires are soldered to some pins. So you, you want to take this part right here, and it's a, off, and it's a quarter of a turn. So just take it, and it just quarter of a turn off, and then you just work it off. Now what you want to look at right here is that you can just see there's no real threads, and it's just a quarter of a turn. And, and so uh, don't try to turn it more than about a quarter of a turn or you're going to damage uh, some stuff. Now, to put it back on, it's real simple. You take your new interconnect cable and you just line it back up and you just kind of shake it a little bit, kind of. And then you can use your thumbs and lock it in or I like to usually take a pair of pliers and just a quarter of a turn and and lock it in and then we just take the cable and spin it back on there I want to show you how to troubleshoot the curly cord inside the spring of the VCAM digital the VCAM modular the VCAM 5 and the VCAM 6 camera systems so what I like to do is I like to um, the camera system is on and this camera system is working but let's say we have a, a flickering screen or, or a, a black screen on our control module I want to grab the at the base of the of the termination and grab the camera head and then I'm going to turn it or and I want to see if I have a flicker in the screen if I if I if I'm holding the, this blue cable still and I grab the base 
and I and I'm moving it in different directions and I see a flicker then that it indicates that there's probably a short in that curly cord so then we're gonna have to go in there and we're gonna have to replace it and and see if we resolved our problem so to replace the curly cord what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our spinner wrench in this wrench should have came with your control module and what I want you to see right here is this wrench it has a little bitty uh, just a little bitty tip on the end of it right here and we're gonna place that at the end of the spring and we're gonna twist the camera head off so let's show you how that happens so I'm going to take the tip and I want to place the tip right at the edge of that spring and I usually like to use the back side of this to support the spring a little bit. And so once I have it, I, and then I just start spinning it off, it's roughly three rotations around. Now, once I take that, that camera head off, and I see a few people, not very often, but they do make a mistake. Now we have this cap right here that we need to unscrew. And sometimes I'll, I'll take a little bit of uh, pliers. That one's on there pretty snug. So I'm gonna get a pair of pliers. And I'm going to take these pliers and what I want to do is I don't want to turn the camera head I want to turn this cap because if I turn the camera head there's a chance that I can there's some pins on the back side of that camera that I could break off so I want to turn the cap holding the camera head still once I have the cap loose I want to unplug I'm going to pull straight out as you notice right here, there's four little pinholes. And if you look inside the camera, you'll also see those four pinholes. And so if we spun the camera, there's a good chance we'd break those pins off. Now, the next thing I want to do to get to the curly cord and replace it, once again, I take my spinner wrench I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put it on this side of the spring and I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm just going to spin it off. Making, I try to use that, the tool slightly at an angle. Now, now, due to the videotape of this, I would have been probably standing on the other side to get a better angle of it, but I want you all to see what I'm doing. And now, you'll see that it comes off. Once again, if, if I can't release it with my hands, I will take this wrench and I'll loosen it up and then I can spin the cap off and once it's loose then I can unplug the curly cord. We can ins there's once we get this apart there's several things that we want to do. We want to ins it, this will usually be really dirty. We we'll want to wipe it off and see if we see any damage to it. And another thing we want to do is we want to inspect these wire ropes. Sometimes through the use of it, they, they'll get little burrs in it. So I, I run my hand around it and just see if I can feel a burr. And if there's a little burr, I want to go ahead and replace it. Because if not, then the burr could be jabbing your curly cord and create a short in, on the uh, curly cord itself. So to put this back together, what I want to do is I want to feed the I 
I want to feed these uh, wire ropes, what we call lanyards, through the cap. I'm, if you notice, there's a little slot for them. I'm going to put the other one in the slot on the opposite side. And I'm going to bring the, the cap and it's going to hold it in place. Now, notice that the O-rings are here. What we want to do is put some silicone on that to help secure to make sure no water will go through the 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 uh, O-rings and, and and then go inside the uh, base. So I have some silicone grease here. Now we usually buy this at Lowe's or Home Depot, but you can get it probably at other places. And so I'm just going to put a little dab of that on there. And something like this will last us a, a long time. So I just grab a little bit. I'm going to place it on that, those O-rings. back on it. Now one of the things you need to notice here is that there's a little key inside there. I don't know if you can see it down at the bottom. So we want to line that key up to the to the slot in, inside the uh, curly cord. So I notice it's at the top here so I need to spin this down slightly. And I just kind of do it, get it close and do it by feel. And then push it in a little bit and then screw the cap back on and then I can and I want to have it really uh, pretty snug Now, if I'm not for sure if that's right, I can always take my camera, plug it in, and see if I have a picture on my control module. Right now my control module's off, but I could do that. Now, now let's go ahead and, well, here's a trick that, um, it, it's hard to get the curly cord through the spring, so what you want to do is go ahead and place these in these lanyards in their place the way you want them or they need to be. Let me sh I'll show you here in just a second. And notice the way I have it, if I pull it, they're straight. They're not crossed each other. Now here's the key. I didn't put any silicone on this these O-rings because what I want to do is I'm going to put some electric tape to hold that cap from sliding back and I'm going to feed it through the spring. If I tried to just not tape that cap and feed it through that spring, it's almost impossible because somewhere it's going to, that cap's going to grab the edge of that spring and it's going to get pushed way back here and I'm going to be fighting it. So just a little electric tape will solve that problem. Just wrapping around here. There's probably some residue of the last time this was put together of the silicone so the tape doesn't want to stick real good. If you had a knife it might have been good to cut it. But it's just temporary, just long enough for us to get it through that spring. See if that'll work. It's not a very good one. I'm just going to feed it through. Let gravity help me here. 
And then I'm just going to feed this the spring on here, on the base. Now one of the things I want to show you is that sometimes people go too far in putting a spring on. Now this is, st I'm still going to go a little bit more, but I don't want to get it on so tight that I can't get the wrench back in here. So um, it's not going to come off even now. I'm going to go try to get it on a little bit more. But uh, that's about the width you want to stop. So you, when you get ready to take it off again, the, the tool will fit back inside that groove. OK. So I think I got it in there pretty good, if you can see that. Down here, the cable's kind of, let's see if I can get a twist on it. Notice that the tool can still fit in there to grab that, that edge of that spring. Now, I'm going to pull this back. And this is, this is where you need three hands. And I'm going to grab that. And now I can take the tape off and toss that on the ground for a second. I'll clean it up after the video is done. And so now I can go ahead and I can set my silicone on there. bit too much on my hand my glove so we have our silicone on the on the o-rings and if you notice there's a, a key right here and, and uh, right above the four pins on the black part and then there's also right here there's a key and we want to line those up and so I'm gonna Take it and line it up correctly. Push it in, and I'm just going to screw the cap on. Should go right on fairly easily. And once I kind of get it started, then I can always take my little wrench. And I just grab it and I just slowly turn the cap. I don't want to turn the camera because I don't want to take a chance of breaking the four pins inside the camera head. Now once I have it tight, I want to line up, if you notice that the the lanyards inside the spring are straight and I like to take a marker and I like to mark it because I need to make three rotations and so uh, I can find a mark somewhere or I can uh, place it and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put a little mark on the camera just a small one, doesn't really matter how big it is as long as you can see it. And then I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise three times. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Then I'm going to take the spring and I'm going to start placing it on. And It'll go on, should go on three rotations. The main objective, once again, we don't want to put it on too tight where we can't get the wrench on back on there to take it off. So somewhere right in there is fine. 
The, the last thing is to check to see if I've done it right is if I can pull this straight and I see the wire ropes and uh, the lanyard straight, then I know I've done a good job. And if you notice, they are straight, so I've successfully put on the camera correctly. To show you how to troubleshoot your camera on your VVAX Metrotech VCAM 5 and VCAM 6. Now in a, another video, we show you how to remove the camera head and to replace it. So in this video, I just want to show you how to troubleshoot the camera head. So first of all, once we remove it, I want to look at the camera head and I want to make sure that there's no moisture in the camera and everything's in good condition. Next, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to in, in this, uh, there's a round plug on the side of your VCAM 5 and VCAM 6 control module. We want to unplug it. And then what you're going to see here is a, is a plug in which we can plug our camera in. And what I want you to take notice of is that right here there's a little slot at the, at the top of here. And that's a little key where right here at the, right here at the top, we want to line those up and plug it in. Okay, so I'm just going to take it and I'm going to line it up. And what I want to see is always a good sign when the lights come on. So I want to troubleshoot the lights. And so I'm going to just adjust it back and forth, make sure it gets bright. Now, if you'll look at, and I'm just turning the knob back and forth here to get that adjustment. Next thing I want to do is I want to look and see if I have a good picture. Is, is the picture uh, clear? Is it um, focused? And, and what I notice here in this camera head is that it's not clear. Now one of the things that we want to check out is the, is the lens clean or not because there may not be anything wrong with the camera. It may not be out of focus. There just may be something on that lens like grease or something like that. So I want to get a paper towel and I'm going to wipe it off. So we're going to take this paper towel and we're going to wipe the lens off. And now notice how clean it is now. So there was nothing wrong with the camera. It was just the lens that was dirty. And so now I verified that the lights are working and then I got a good picture on the camera head. So um, this is a good camera. So if you have any problems, it wouldn't be with the camera head, more than likely. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Our contact information is at the bottom of this video or you can go to our website.